stuff I can put out there for you. So let's dive straight in there. And at number one, we're gonna look at dark mode. I thought when I first understood this that I've just been taking Microsoft Word for granted. I've never even really thought about maybe I can customize it. And dark mode is just like our phones. We can change the colors on Microsoft Word. I always use gray and blue because that's what's given me, but there's actually a range of colors you can change it to. Now this hack is gonna show you how you can take photographs with details in and also PDF documents to convert them into Microsoft Word. Amazing. So let's jump into it now on my Microsoft Word document and I promise this is gonna absolutely knock the wind out of you. So to change it from a PDF onto our Word, in this example, we're gonna be using an academic article. So I click onto File. This is gonna open up a window here. Then I'm gonna go on to Open. I'm gonna be wanting to open a PDF academic article that I've already saved called Materialities and Craft. And here it's downloading it already, converting it into my Word document. And here it is already. Now, the good thing about this, it allows you then to do various edits to this document. As we go down, there's also photographs it's copied over, and then it will allow us to, to change, to move things around, to put spaces. So previously a PDF document, which would have been difficult to make notes, we can now add notes and do what we want to the document. Step three is how we can copy and paste multiple times in our clipboard. Now this is really useful when we're managing documents, we're writing a long essay or doing a dissertation, because what we can start to do, particularly with something like references, when we're copy and pasting, we can build up a record of this in the Microsoft Word clipboard, and then we can refer back to it and take all of those copies and then paste them all together. I'll show you how this works now. Showing you how to copy and paste multiple excerpts from an academic article as we're reading it. I'm gonna begin by just clicking on the clipboard here, part of Word, and you'll see these start to build up as I copy, as I go through this article. So perhaps there's a sentence here that I want to copy and store. I'm gonna copy that, and perhaps down here, oh well, there's another important sentence here which I think might be useful. So I'm going to copy this. Perhaps a sentence here has something important to say which I want to take away with me. So I'm going to copy that. And as you'll see on the bottom right here, there's three of 24 items that I are able to put to the clipboard. And we'll see here how they're gradually built up. Now, what I might want to do on a separate Word document is actually group these together. So now I can paste all of these, which will come together there, or perhaps I can just paste one of them. And you can see you could gather up to 24 quotes or excerpts as you're reading through an article, which you either can then transpose over to a document and use for your assignment. Now, number four is another absolute gem. And again, I didn't even realize this. I'd always gone about the hard way or I'd used Google Documents to facilitate this. But Microsoft Word does allow us to collaborate with other people on the document. I've been in the habit of emailing the Microsoft Word document, making changes, and then emailing it back. Just taking far longer than what it needs to. Well, there's a way to collaborate on Microsoft Word and work at the same time and merge our changes within the document. If it's an individualized piece of essay or assignment, then you have to make sure that collaboration doesn't appear on the document. I actually had this once with a student who had to go before an academic misconduct panel because she'd left the track changes and the collaboration tools on the document and we could see other people had inputted, created the ideas and made comment. And then this created issues to the actual ownership of the work. So let's get down into the document and show you how you can do collaboration. Go towards the share button in the top right. We click on this and this will give us a choice of different actions that we can make. So here we are. So perhaps we want to share it to different people in our organization, or maybe we can share the link. Also, there's more specific things here that we can use. So perhaps we can share it to more specific people in our organization. Um, also, we can click the box about whether we want to allow editing of the document, or we might want to restrict this. Uh, also, we might want to put it in just review mode or block the download of the document. But in the main, what this will do is allow collaboration and comments to happen through and across the document. 
Hack number five is how we use Microsoft Word to help us with citations and referencing. Now again, this is an absolute gem of a hack and it can really get rid of mistakes when we're doing those nitty bitty reference lists which takes so much painstaking time towards the end. So let's jump into the document and I'll give you a basic overview of how to do the references and citations in Microsoft Word. Firstly, I wanna draw your attention to the ribbon at the top and the references tab. So if we click onto this, and this will give us a whole host of different features that we can use regarding scholarship. So importantly, if we're thinking about citations and ordering the reference list, perhaps after my first sentence here, I want to insert a reference. First of all, you have to think about the style that you are using. So you might need to find this out from your department or university. For this example, we're going to use Harvard 2008. So I've changed the box there. Then I will click on insert citation. Now, previously, I have stored the citations to examples here, but perhaps you might need to add a new source if you've not used it before. And within this, you would be putting the type of source, so a book or a journal article. There's a whole range of different sources, and that will give you the correct formatting of that source and style. You then need to put the author, title, journal name, year, pages, volume and issue. And then once it's in there, it's stored for further use in the future when you're working on Microsoft Word. So in this case then, I've just been talking about space engineering. So I'll know I'll be using this reference here. So if I click on this, it will give the brackets with the reference in there. And then perhaps at the end of here, I need to insert another reference here. So I'm going to insert one that I put in previously and that will appear here. So it's all perfectly coordinated. Now we have to think about the reference list. So if we go to the end of the work, and then perhaps you might have 20 different sources which are stored in your managed sources. If we click on that tab here, you can also see how they become stored within Microsoft Word. So we're gonna click on bibliography. So this gives us a choice of building into our document a bibliography, references, or works cited. I've said before that Nearly all of the time, predominantly, it's references that you need to put work that has been cited in your, art, in your article, in your essay. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to automatically produce the references that I've input here. So it's a really useful feature for you to have. It orders your citations and also creates the reference list for you at the end. I also want to take this opportunity to draw your attention to this research tab here. It's a recent feature of Microsoft Word. So if we click on this, it's going to take you here and it's going to give you access to basically a search facility within Microsoft Word. So I'm going to try here a paper that I wrote myself. So I put Egan and then the title Hubble Trouble. And let's see if it finds it. So here we go. It's found the academic paper. So I'm not even having to navigate onto Google or a search engine. It's actually got this built within Microsoft Word. And I'm going to click on that. And perhaps I want to add this to my references or to documents. So I'm going to press the plus sign here, add the source of the citation, and it's going to add that here. You see, it's got that reference built in. And we've added that. So this is a way that you can find articles and find referencing without actually leaving Microsoft Word. Number six is another suggestion which I never had a clue about. We'll call this the rewrite suggestion. What Microsoft Word has built into it is the capacity when we're writing sentences for it to actually suggest alternative. And this is really good, perhaps if English isn't our first language or at the stages of sentence construction where we might have had feedback or comment in terms of how we need to improve the flow and structure of sentences, well, Microsoft Word will offer us suggestions. Hack number seven is tables of contents. I didn't have a clue about this and I never knew it could be formatted for you. I used to spend an hour trying to put a table together, just doing the spacing on the page, trying to indent it, and I didn't know this. So there is an easy hack. This is particularly useful if you're doing a big document like a dissertation where there needs to be a table of contents provided detailing all the different sections and chapters of your work. What I would draw your attention to I do see a failing in some students when they write essays is that there seems to be an abstract and a table of contents. The traditional essay format does not require a table of contents, so please consult your module leaders and lecturers and professors to see if they want this. Understand the habits that you're using and what the practice of your department is. Number eight is how to navigate around your document. 
another one that I failed miserably at. Now I will tell you at this stage as well that I do suffer from dyslexia and one of the reasons why I've had to look further into these tips and hints and cheats is I've had to find ways to improve my understanding and organization of documents because my dyslexia meant there's a real messiness and disorganization. Previously, what I would tend to do is just scroll through documents. And when you're managing a document which could be 10, 20 pages long, this can be forever. And it's about saving time. All these little hacks added together can run into the hours. And you think over the whole lifetime of your studentship, we can think about days that you can be saving by putting together all these tips and hints and cheats. So let's jump onto the Word document and I'll show you how to do this navigation around a document using the different headings. Helping us navigate around these bigger documents, we have the navigation feature. So if we click on Show, and it will give us a choice here, we want to click on Navigation Pane, and that will bring up this panel on the left here which will show us different ways to navigate. So it could be through pages that we want to go to, and that will bring up that document. Perhaps we want to zoom in on different headings that we have. So this will flick automatically. And imagine if this essay or document was 10, 20, 50 pages long. Also, we can put search terms in here. So we could put in maybe a word like simply that we know appears in the document, and it will find where this word appears throughout the document that we can then zoom in on. Also, I wanna bring your attention to a really useful feature here. If we click on that tiny arrow there, there's lots of advanced features as well. So not only will it find words, but also graphics and tables, equations, footnotes, comments, if you were making comments with a reviewer on the document. And also if we go on to advanced, there's other options to look at there, that what things that we might be able to search for. And also I wanted to show you if we click on here, how you can replace a word. So imagine in an essay or a, a huge document, you had repeatedly got a word wrong or a reference wrong, then you could replace it. Uh, the spelling was wrong and it would do it throughout the whole of the document. Also if we click onto options, there's a whole series of different things that would help you navigate around the document, save you time and give you lots of shortcuts. <laughs> Now, hack number nine, I've also done a video for this, which goes through how to tidy up your references. But importantly, our references are very often where sloppiness can appear because we do it at the end and when we're getting a little tired. So here's some tips and cheats about how you can use Microsoft Word to improve the indentation, the font, and get that consistency throughout. So let's visit a document that I've prepared here. Firstly, when we look at this messy reference list with things not in order, I'm going to go up onto the Word document and click in this small arrow here in Paragraph. And this is going to take me through to this area here. First of all, what I want to do is copy and paste all of this area. We've done this. And then if we click on Paragraph and then we go through Alignment, we want this to be justified. And then as we go down, we want to click on Hanging Indent, which will create a nice space in between the various references. So we click on to Hanging. Then also line spacing will need to be double line spacing. We click on here. Importantly, you've got the preview panel here, which will show you how these changes will turn out. So I'm going to click OK. And here we have this perfectly indented hanging on these different references here. So also what we want to do then now, if we look, it is not in alph alphabetical order. So I'm going to show you how to do that so again. If we highlight all of the area and then I'm going to click onto the A to Z button here and then it's going to say paragraphs yes ascending from A to B and if we click OK it's put them now into alphabetical order D H O S S something else we can see here this stoller at the end isn't in the correct font so if we look it's Arial 10 so I'm going to change this here to Arial and then 10. And also we can see that this book here needs to be in italics. So we're gonna click that and put that on there. So very quickly then, we've changed a, a messy, disordered reference list into a perfectly alphabetized and a nice hanging indent and all with the correct font and sizing. Perfect to get your high marks. Number 10 is another absolute beauty. And what this does, it creates shortcuts to do autocorrect. So we only need to type one or two letters and the word will be produced for us. Again, now this has really helped me with my dyslexia 
There's some words that I just have a nightmare with spelling. I never get a simple word like bureaucracy correct. So what I often do is just put that into the autocorrect button. So when I begin to write a few of these key remembered letters, it will produce that word for me and save me just getting it wrong time and time again. It also gives us a huge time saving element when we have these big repeated words which might be occurring all the time in our discipline. There could be something like rhizomatic pedagogy. And rather than the labor of typing that out repeatedly through a, an assignment, we can just type a few key letters and it will appear automatically. And this saves us spelling it wrong and it saves us all that time and effort and confusion of writing out these hard to learn conceptual terms. This is how you add auto corrections, perhaps commonly misspelled words or long words that you might be using in your document often. So if we go down to click on file, go down to options and then we want to go into proofing and then if we click on autocorrect that will take us to this space here. I've already pre-prepared some so if I'll show you here BU and here then if I type in BUR it will automatically fill out the word bureaucracy for me. Also perhaps a word here uh, RH Maybe you are commonly using rhizomatic horizons in your document and don't want to be continually typing out in full. So if you just type RH, it will automatically add this to the document. So I'm going to show you this now. Click OK. And then if I just type RH and then space, it adds that for us. So a nice cheat to save time when you're using words all the time or maybe words that you commonly misspell. So that's it, I just wanna bring you to the attention to these videos here and these videos also here, which are gonna offer further advice in terms of referencing and how to do citations properly. Now remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Hopefully you've got something out of today. Bye for now, take care and enjoy your studying.